Now, most people know I use Linux. This is my desktop and right behind me. It's gorgeous, right? I love it. But uh, why I say I hate most Linux distributions is it, it feels like someone did what I did back here and then decided to say, hey, this is good for everybody. And that's what I hate about most Linux distributions is it's not good or it's just a bad copy of Windows or Mac. You know, usually they, they take a cue from them. So what do I mean by all this? Like when you look at oh, many distributions, whether it's like a Gruda or all these other distributions that get thrown my way in my inbox and say, hey, review this distro. Well, at the end of the day, a lot of these distros are just cobbling together everyone else's work and then calling it a distribution. And that's all I did with my distribution back here. I mean, <laughs> that's just me putting together the tools I like and then making it a distribution. And there's some caveats to here. When I said the title of this video, most distributions, what I meant by that was there's some distributions that are perfectly fine. And it's just not, uh, they've done a good job of designing their own tools and making a more cohesive experience and not just cobbling stuff together. A good example of this, if you're a noob to Linux and you want to try Linux, install Linux Mint. It's my only recommendation. And the reason of that being is Clem and a lot of the team over there, they've done and put in a lot of work. They didn't just take some other people's work and then tossed it in their distro. They did their own desktop environment. They did their own update stuff. They wrote a whole bunch of Python scripts to make a very cohesive update experience. There's so many things that they did with Linux Mint that were so good and so unique to it. That's why it's a recommended distribution. And uh, I don't personally use Mint. I use Debian, which, hey, vanilla Debian is not for noobs, but I love the stability and reliability of Linux server. Let me say that again. Linux server, not a Linux distribution, desktop distribution. Linux server is the reliable, stable Linux that you hear about. When it comes to Linux distributions, I would say it's only a matter of time before a noob breaks it. Because at the end of the day, they're going to try and make it work like a Windows or a Mac, and they're going to try and do some silly things that, frankly, cause it to do all kinds of shenanigans. And just, it's a bad experience for many new users. If it's a user that only uses it for like web browsing or something like that, a base distribution like Mint can do it. But for most users, your gamers, your, your advanced users, your developers, all those types of people, I say stick to the main line. Whether it's Debian, whether it's Linux Mint, uh, you could do, you know, more polished products. I, I like Kubuntu, believe it or not, even though it's an Ubuntu derivative, it's still a very proven and has a massive user base that it's good. These are just a few distributions. Like as far as recommendations go, uh, there's really only four that I make these days. And it depends on where you are at in your journey. The first one, Linux Mint. If you're a complete noob, it's a good starting point. It does a good job of holding your hand. The second one that I recommend, uh, Kubuntu. I really like the KDE experience and Kubuntu does a great job of polishing the product and it has a massive user base. The third one, Fedora. Once you start to understand these two, you can move on to understanding package managers and Fedora does a pretty good job of uh, having a really stable system because it's based on a, probably the biggest corporate Linux entity, Red Hat. Red Hat Enterprise Linux, well, Fedora's its desktop equivalent of that uh, operating system. And then finally, for the fourth one, uh, just vanilla Debian. You know, that's like your more advanced user, someone that wants to take a server and kind of build on it and make a very, very good system. There's a reason why hundreds of distributions are based on Debian. It's it's a very good distribution. So those are really only four. And I know some Arch users are already screaming at me in the comments and I hear you. Arch is great. But it's, at the end of the day, it's just for the hobbyists. Not, not that that's a bad thing, but it's really for those hobbyists. You're not going to see anybody in the professional sphere use Arch because eventually an update will break it, and that's just going to be uh, problematic. So as far as Linux distributions go, though, it is the year 
of the corporate corporate Linux desktop. And what I mean by that is you need to look at Linux distributions and see that there is an uptick in adoption when it comes to the Steam Deck, for instance. That's really Steam OS, which is based on an immutable version of Arch. That's a mouthful, right? But it is sold more than 1 million units. That's amazing. And then we also have Chrome OS on the other sphere, controlled by Google. You have Valve over here, you have Google over here, and they've made incredible distributions. And that's why it's really turned me off to so many Linux distributions, because they're all just wannabes at this point. They need to do something like these two companies have done and make a cohesive experience. And I think the big thing with it is, when it comes to Steam, o De uh, Steam Dex, Steam OS, it is a very good experience, but you're not going to choose your desktop environment. It's going to be KDE. You're not going to choose the entry screens. They, they make choices for you, and they don't try to appease everything and everyone. The problem with most Linux distributions are they're not like that. They're like, hey, we want everybody. We have 1%, and we're all fighting over this really niche market. And that's awful. It is just a terrible experience. And that's why I hate most Linux distributions because they're trying to be so much. And by trying to be so much, they are nothing to me. They're dead to me. <laughs> and that's kind of where I'm at in this thing. It, it makes sense when you think about it. Uh, same with Chrome OS. It's un unabashedly Google and you're tied into this ecosystem and they've done a good job of saying, this is what the desktop looks like. And they do that because they can support it. And it's really easy to work in all those updates. So does that mean that Linux desktop is doomed? Are we just doomed to have the corporate overlords of Valve and Google and whoever else enters the space come in? Well, not so much. I think it is always an amazing building block. And Linux server gives us anything that we want. So someone that wants to come in and tinker and really do these things, I don't think there's anything better than Linux because we're we just having an infinite number of options to build amazing desktops and, and just do amazing things and, and just explore and, and really fall in love with computing. And that's really what Linux is to me. So I just hate Linux distributions. That's why I don't really review them. I don't do any update news. I don't do that because to me, it's pointless. It's going nowhere. You're just preaching to the choir, so to speak. And that's why I hate about Linux distributions and why you don't see any distro reviews or these things that normal Linux channels would give you. I kind of want to explore because I saw something on Twitter. I want to leave you with this. And it was like, hey, what Linux content creator do you like that represents your interests and beliefs? And to me, that was an insulting insulting question not because it was a yes or no question because the question itself was so fundamentally flawed i'm not here to be your echo chamber i'm not here to make you reinforce your beliefs i'm here to challenge your beliefs i'm here to make you think differently so you learn more that is the whole purpose of me in this channel it's not to sit here and be a fanboy and be like, hey, let's all just go out together and do this one thing and we'll all just high five each other and, and it's great. No, it, it's to make you think differently, to make you learn, to improve you. And to do that, I have to challenge your beliefs. I have to challenge your interests and let you see the flip side of the coin. Maybe some people may like, well, you're a fence rider. You'll go back and forth. I do these things because I don't care if I make a fool of myself. I care about how much I'm learning and the amount of skills that I'm gaining. Because at the end of the day, YouTube could disappear and I'd still have that massive skill set that I built up because I thought this way. I might not have as many followers if I would just go with the trends and just do the things that everyone does. But that's the reason why I make videos like I hate most Linux distributions because it's a different stance. It pisses people off. And I do that because I want you to think differently. Much like a Mac. Oh, that felt dirty.